I'm your host Jason Park and behind me I have a 2019 Honda Civic Type R. The legendary front wheel drive track monster has returned. Lion Godzilla, let's go. Eco! She get in my ride for a limited time, then look in my eyes and don't go. Bugatti, Bugatti, Bugatti. All of my shooters got two bodies, and they on the hunt for a new body. But I never pay for the pool naughty. Ran up the fuck you gonna do body. Promise you. Man, who the hell we going to rob? Mickey Mouse? Alright guys, so right now I'm with Eigen in her 2019 Honda Civic Type R. Eigen, tell us, what made you buy the Type R? So, um, well, I grew up with Hondas and Mazdas, and um, whenever this car was released, my dad showed it to me, and I just had to have one. I don't really know what it was, I guess it was the looks, um, especially the interior, I just had to have one. So, okay, so you grew up with Hondas and Mazdas. Yeah. What Mazdas have you like had in the family? Um, so it was really just my dad. Um, he had a few RX-7s. He had two FCs and one FD. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does he still have any of them? No. <laughs> that was a sad day. But yeah, they were a lot of fun. Those were only like those weren't really street cars. Um. So your dad's like a car guy, car guy. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you this then by you getting the type r what was that like like what uh, uh accumulated in, into that decision and then did you tell your dad and what was his reaction like i want the whole story all right funny story so um we sat down he showed me this car in 2016 it hadn't been released yet it was just debuted at somewhere in paris i can't remember but he showed it to me and i was like oh man i have to have one i'm getting one and he was like uh no you're not <laughs> and i was like well why not he said, you know, it was a limited run, I was too young, couldn't afford it, blah, blah, blah. Um, a lot of these cars were paid in full before they ever arrived. They were paid in full before they were even made. Wow, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, and they were selling for like way over sticker price. And at the time, we didn't know what it would cost. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, me being a teenager, I was like, oh, I'm not? Okay. So that made me I'll want to prove you more. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in true teenage girl fashion, I went to my dad's boss at Honda, because he worked at Honda, and got my name on the waiting list for the Type R. Um, Did he know that you- No. You, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, whenever it, so I was supposed to get this Type R in February of 2020. Mm -hmm. I got it in January of 2020, it arrived a little early. Um, I did not tell my dad that it was coming. I did not tell my dad that I was getting a new car. Um, but as it happened, he crashed his pilot, which was what he was driving at the time. So, you know, um, he came down, got my other Civic, the one that I had been driving. And he's like, so what are you gonna do now? I was like, oh, dad, I already have a car. He's like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. He's like, what'd you get? And I was like, I got a Civic. 
<laughs> and then he was like, oh, okay, cool. And then he came down and I had him parked right next to each other. He's like, so where's your Civic? <laughs> right there, dad. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got yelled at, screamed at, everything. How did you do this and not tell me? Blah, 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 blah. Why did you do this? And I'm like, well, you know, I've been saving forever for this car. Um, he wasn't really upset with me. He was more surprised. He was secretly proud. He, he, was, he was very proud, yeah. but he was more upset that I didn't tell him. Right, right, right. Okay, so what made you choose the pearl white or no, the championship white? What white is that? That's championship, championship white. Championship white. What made you, uh, I'm surprised I knew that off the top of my head. What made you choose the championship white color over like the, the robust yellow or red or blue? What, what made you go with white? Um, so with the Type R, you don't get to choose the color. You get what you get. So your name's on a waiting list. If it gets there, you can either pass it up or you, you get that Type R. And if you pass it up, your name gets put to the end of the list. Wait, okay, hold on. Okay, so your name just goes on a list, but oh, you yeah. can't like, like if I'm gonna I go- I was just praying I didn't get like the ugly dark gray or like yeah. the blue or the red. I was just praying. You can't pick your color? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. But at least you got the most iconic white with the red interior. Like, if you think back into like the Integra Type R days, mm -hmm. right? It was the championship white with the red interior and everyone in co car culture who, uh, you know, took their Integras <laughs> and put the JD or the Japanese, you know, front ends and stuff, they always went white with the red interior. So you got really lucky if you couldn't choose. Yeah, I wanted either, well, here's the order I wanted. I wanted Sonic Gray Pearl, which is like, a destroyer gray type color. It's my favorite medium gray. Um, and then I wanted black, just cause I've always had black cars. Mm. And then I wanted white. And then I was just really praying I didn't get any of the other colors. Yep, yep. Um, the yellow is actually a limited edition run. They only made 300 of them. Oh, so they're like super, super rare. Yeah, and they were uh, like, they, they were all sold, paid in full before, or not paid in full, they were all sold before they were even made. Okay. Um, there were like 300 of them for America. I think Canada got like 800 of them. They sold in five minutes. Um, That's crazy. So I got mine in 2020. Even though it's a 2019, I'm still the first owner. I don't really know how that worked out. I don't ask too many questions. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But the 2021 had the limited edition model, which was the Phoenix Yellow. Okay, so let me ask you this. Owning the Type R, um, what are people's reactions when they see the Type R? like whether you're at a gas station or anywhere. So little kids love it. They totally love it. It's got flowers on it. I mean, you yeah. know, how could you not love it? Um, a lot of people think it's not my car. Mm. A lot of people think, um, so many people think it's just a really slow car because I'm a girl and then they just think it's pretty. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people underestimate it, but I'm not trying to say it's like fast or anything. It's it's just zippy. But, it's um, zippy. Yeah, it's quick. <laughs> it's, it's quick. It's fun. We'll say that. But um, uh, on the road, a lot of American muscle cars will line up next to me and, you know, kind of like want to play cat and mouse with me. Yeah. And they'll be really surprised. By how quick it is? By how much, I don't know. So a lot of people don't really know about this car. It's not like a 350Z or something that everybody knows about. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I guess they just really don't expect anything from a Honda Civic because there's yeah. a really big Honda Civic stereotype mm -hmm. where, you know, Civics are slow, loud, ugly, low, you know, stuff like that. But I've owned every type of Civic prelude hatch crx under the sun uh the one thing that i'll always say about civics are you know you're getting reliability mm -hmm. um the way they drive they're very fun like two of my favorite cars to this day are the fifth gen preludes mm -hmm. and the crx there's something about it where you don't need a lot of power you just need enough but you can feel everything in the road when you drive it mm -hmm. and it just makes it an experience so what have you done to the Type R? Okay, um, so I've done a few things. I haven't touched the engine at all. Uh, Smart, reliability people. Reliability. <laughs> <laughs> um, so under the hood wise, I have a competition clutch. It's a twin disc ceramic clutch. So it's got two clutches. It's really cool. Um, I will never ever meet the amount of horsepower that it holds. What's, what, okay, so what made you get that clutch and what's the difference between that clutch and the stock clutch as far as feel? Oh, well, the feel is actually super, super cool. Like, it's got an initial bite and another bite because there's two clutches. It's so cool. Um, so that's a really big difference in the way that it feels. The pedal is a little bit stiffer, but only a little bit stiffer. I thought it was still the stock clutch. The reason I got that clutch is because that clutch was developed on this mm -hmm. car. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, competition barred my car for just a little bit. 
and as a repayment, I got a clutch. It's That's super nice. I love it, and I will definitely stay with either competition twin disc or at least twin disc. Um, so shout shout out to competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got Acuity shifter bushings. They're really nice. They make it really clicky. Really nice. Um, I have a hybrid short shifter. Now, as far as exhaust, I have an HKS Catalyst downpipe, and I have a Remus cat back. It's Valvetronic, so of the three tips, the middle one has a valve in it that opens and closes, um, depending on if you really want to just have it really loud or yeah. if you want to like quiet it down. See, I, I, I'm a fan of cars that are quiet when you're cruising, and then they get loud when you really want to get on it. I want to say that mine is one of those. She gets kind of loud going uphill, though. Well, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you're giving it a little there's, more there's throttle. There's not like drone. I, I don't know. You would just have to see. Drone typically, in my opinion, happens when you have really big exhaust mm -hmm. on lower powered cars. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, from the factory, is pushing like 300, right? Mm -hmm. Or close? Yeah, about 300, right? 306. 306. Okay, so that is. I always. I, that's I guess, a pretty medium number. Yeah, know? that that's a really good medium number. I mean. I don't think that for what it weighs, anything over 300 isn't necessary if you if you encompass everything, right? You encompass MPG, reliability, usable power, driving in traffic, and then driving in the city. Like you, you add all of this together, 300 is a perfect number to cruise when you wanna just, you know, hey, let's take a trip with the homies to Florida. And then it's like, all right, let me, let me pass this person that's going really slow, right? You get both thrills. You also get the thrill of like, oh, let's ride with my homie somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And you get to do it. You always do. You know, you get to pass, you get to line up, you get to have fun, you get to roll, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun and you, you can definitely hold drone in this car. Yeah. It's, I feel like this car is very, like you connect with it immediately. There's no, how do I use this car? There's no, what does this button do? Everything's really, I feel like everything's exactly where it's supposed to be in the car and everything is just really intuitive. So, okay, so you got the exhaust, you, you got the clutch. What made you get the pedals? What, why the flower, like why the flowers? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> um, so I thought it was really pretty, so I got it. That <laughs> was the cereal girl. Yeah, um, okay. Anyway. <laughs> so I thought it was pretty, so I got it. You know, I wanted a lever, so I got HKS coilovers. So I wanted it, I got it. I wanted these wheels, I got them. So, uh, you know. How, okay, let me ask you this, because because it is the type R, when you got the HKS uh, coilovers, I've had HKS, uh, it's funny that you said earlier that your family is a Honda and Mazda mm -hmm. family. So my first cars were the MX-3 with the V6 1.8 liter motor. <laughs> wow. And then I had the uh, MX-6 with the KLZE engine swap in it from okay. the KLDE motor. Mm -hmm. So I've had my little run of Mazdas, you know, not quite like the RX-7, but you know, the other More little Ford Mazda. probes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I had HKS coilovers on the MX-6 mm -hmm. and I had them super, super stiff. Mm -hmm. Now, how is the ride quality on the Type R with the HKS coilovers? Um, perhaps I'm not the best person to ask because I am not someone that's looking for a smooth ride. I want to feel the car. Um, now, so the Type R actually came with electronic suspension. Okay. Um, and with the drive modes, it stiffens up like magnetically because mm -hmm. um, it's got magnets in the fluid or like magnet shavings or whatever. And then, you know, blah, 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 electromagnets, stiffer, whatever. Um, so I actually took that away with the HKS coilovers. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just one dampening setting. Now you can change the dampening on the coilovers, like go out there and, you know, get your little thing and twist it. But, right. Um, I have it set to about halfway, like half stiffness mm -hmm. on the coilovers. Um, it's got 10k spring rates in the front, eight in the back, but you need it in the front because engine's up there. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. I think the ride is very in between. Now, will your head bounce some if you're going on a really bad part of the interstate? It will, but does it ride really nicely whenever you're on a smooth road? It does. Okay, so it's, it's the perfect medium. I think. <laughs> so what's the, what's the craziest thing that you've done in the Type R? I have reached 160 miles an hour in this car. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so going 160, um... It's terrifying. I, I just kept thinking, like, if I hit one pothole, if I hit one pebble, I'm going to pass away. <laughs> like, what, made you, what made you decide, like, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just go. Okay, so there was nobody out on the road. I was on the interstate. It looked pretty smooth, you know. And this was done, uh, what, some part in Mexico? In Mexico? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it looked really smooth. Uh, it was the middle of the night. 
There is nobody out. Oh, and I... you did it at nighttime? Oh my God, visibility, like, you're brave. Whatever, yeah. whatever. Um, it was really fun. Um, I had a passenger, actually I think, I don't know. But anyway, there's someone else in the car. My partner was in the car and it was, I don't know. I Maybe it was to show off, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what did they tell you, the passenger tell you? Well, I was the one that said, okay, we need to stop. <laughs> Oh, so they were like thrilled. They were like all about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there was some fear, but yeah, from okay. what I could see. So being going 160 miles per hour in the Type R, let me ask you this. I, I know you said you were it was scary and stuff. It uh, still had some go. I was gonna ask you, did it have go and did it feel planted? Like, did it feel stable at 160 or did it feel it like It definitely ah. felt like stupidly stable. Like the steering wheel was not really doing any of this. Mm -hmm. There were no wobbles. Um, I could feel the wind kind of pushing the car, but you can feel that at like 60 miles an hour. So it yeah. wasn't really bad. There was really nothing getting in the way of me just going like that. Like, I feel like I could have just kept going like that. If I wasn't concerned about engine wear or death, um, I could just keep going like that. It felt really stable. It felt planted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this then. Uh, how many miles are on it? Almost 59,000. 59, I think 000. exactly 59,000, like a hundred something actually. Have you had any issues with the car? Mm, what do you mean? like uh, mechanical issues or anything like outside of like you doing like changing the suspension out or anything like that has the car been reliable or has it been finicky like how has it the ownership been of the type r so ownership of a type r is great it is honestly if you want to drive a very cool daily car this would be the one it does everything you need it to do plus more i never use the full capability of the car but it's always there and i always know it is um, a lot of type r owners run into the problem of the second gear grind I don't have that that's, anymore. That's iconic Honda manuals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, you know, at the end of the day, it is never going to give out on you. Yeah. No matter what, it'll grind to hell and back. And mine didn't grind like that, you know, once every other month or something. Um, it'll never give out on you. So it wasn't what I'd call a mechanical problem. I, w I was okay with it. Well, Hondas have like the best, almost Manual like transmissions, transmissions right? <laughs> but they have that grind for whatever reason. It's almost like, all right, you want the best, you want the smoothest, we're going to give you a little grind. It's, it's a trade-off. Okay, so what advice would you give to somebody looking to buy a Type R? Um, buy it from an old person. Do not buy it from anybody my age, because uh, not everybody drives like I do. I drive totally like a grandma, I promise. Um, and it doesn't sound like I do after I just told that story, but I totally drive like a grandma. I take very good care of my car. Uh, I saw a Type R that was traded in and um, the caliper paint was completely like peeled off to where the calipers were pink. Um, the wheels were curved all the way around. Um, it had like 23,000 miles on it. The clutch was ready to go. People do not know how to drive manual. People mm -hmm. do not know how to take care of a fast car. Mm -hmm. So I definitely say I buy it from an old person or buy it from someone that really took care of the car. Now I will say mileage on these cars doesn't really matter. It's got almost 60,000 miles on it. It drives just like the first day I've got it. Maybe that's due to the modification of a lot of the wear parts, but um, I don't know. I think buying a Type R is a great choice. In today's market, maybe it's not the best choice, but if you want it, there's nothing stopping you because what a person wants, they will get and they will do, so. Well, thank you so much. Guys, now check out a little POV action. Pretty sweet. Okay. It's I, I feel clutch, I, so you don't have to give it any gas. Oh. You don't have to give it gas. No, no, no. So like, literally stop and just take off with the clutch. Okay. Okay. Hold up. Oh. Yeah. What? Okay. Okay, guys. So, so, so listen. When you're in fur type R, you don't even have to like, you know tap the gas or anything you just let off the clutch and it'll roll for you now is this a, a type r feature off the showroom or is this because of the clutch that you installed um so it's a pretty torquey motor uh this is honda's most 
quirkiest motor, quirkiest motor, the motor with most stroke. Uh, and it's 295 pound feet, pound feet from the floor, but um, the twin disc definitely helps because it's got better grip and it can move torque better to your wheels. Right. Um, I remember. I just did just it. I just, it I just did it again. But that was up the hill. I didn't know you could do that. Okay, so everything, for, for people at home that's never been in a Type R, the interior does not, oh, she put it in R mode. R mode stands for ridiculousness, by the way. <laughs> uh, the interior, you have carbon fiber trim, you got your red pinstripes. The interior of the Civic feels very much like, like it's, how can I explain this? The interior does not feel like your regular Civic. Yeah, it's expensive here. It, it feels expensive. The Type R feels like Honda was like. Okay, let me ask you this: Did Honda make this car a loss? Um, definitely not. Okay, so I'm barely, I'm barely tapping the gas, and the car feels like it wants to go all the time. Okay, when you shift, it a med, uh, rev match for you. Okay. I keep it on just because I daily drive this car and, you know, clutch wear, blah, blah, blah. So I keep it on. It's really nice. It even kind of helps on upshifts. Right. Um, but, you know, if you're going to the track, you can totally turn it off, have fun, do what you need to do. And then, you know, whenever you're ready to drive it home, because it, I don't know, this car is a really good metaphor for, like, the duality of man. Oh, no. I like, you know what? For anybody that's a father, for any, like, <laughs> like, I think about it from, like, my perspective. You get a car that's full of performance, you get decent MPG, and you have back seats for the kids. Like... It's... The, the difference between the front seats and the back seats is always hilarious to me. Like you get these nice bolstered Alcantara, like, nice yeah. seats, and the back seats are literally nothing. Yeah, no, these definitely hug. It, it feels like someone's hugging you from the back. They got small arms, but they're still hugging you from the back. <laughs> um, the seating in this is actually really nice. The shifter is very smooth, even though I know it's, you know, aftermarket and stuff. But this, I gotta show you guys this roof. It's, it's pretty dope. So one of the big differences between this and let's say the S2000 is one, this has more power, but the S2000 is a lot more wild than the Type R. The Type R feels like, you know, we're not talking supercar, you know, NSX or anything like that, but it feels like the pen, the pinnacle of Honda engineering. It feels very refined. When you drive the S2000, uh, it feels very wild, right? It feels like the back can just kick out on you. But this, right now we're cruising, even though you have the aftermarket suspension, it still feels very smooth. Right now I'm in six gear cruising, you can barely hear the exhaust. We're at about 2,500 RPM. Braking in this feels very nice. I don't know if you downshift, but I like to throw in a neutral and brake. I do too. Um, Gas mileage. The car feels very smooth. Nice Supra. Got a Subaru in front of us. Evo, haha. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but the power in here, you can feel that it's there the whole time. It's weird because you'll barely be tapping on the gas. And it doesn't feel like a torque monster, but you will watch the RPM constantly just climb. And you're, I'm barely tapping the gas. Okay, I like this Type R a lot. So, in comparison, this has a little more horsepower than my Genesis Coupe. But the way the power delivers in the Type R, it's a lot smoother than it is in the Genesis. And the Genesis is a four banger turbo. This is a four banger turbo, but the power delivery is so drastically different. That might be because it doesn't really have to go through like a drive shaft and the differential all the way to the back. Yep, yep. And not only that, like the turbo, the way it spools, the tuning on this car is beautiful. It's, yeah, for sure. It's it's such a good driving machine. I feel like I should have gotten the Type R it when I could like, have gotten it, be, like right at MSRP. 
I feel like all 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 cars should be like this. Yes. And then you'll get into a regular car after driving this, and you'll be like, oh, whoa. Then you'll get back in this, and you'll be like, whoa, whoa. And then right after, I don't know, right after you're done getting over it, it's like, oh, I'm just driving a normal car. Right, right. No, exactly. And that's the thing. It feels normal. I can feel a little bit of... So I'm not even really getting on it too much to feel what the car has. A lot of cars out today. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this feels so smooth when you want to just cruise with a lot of party in the tank. I feel like there's a party in that gas tank that's just <laughs> ready to just go and throw confetti. It's just ready. Honda did a really good job with this Type R. And you were even saying it just a, a minute ago, right? Like you drive this, every car should be like this, where it has two sides. It's like, um, what is it, Jekyll and Hyde? Yeah. Right, you have the monster performance track, I wanna have fun, mountain run, spirited driving on one end, but you have the conservative, uh, simple, easy, smooth side, side on the other side. Yes, you have the Type R and the Civic. It makes sense. That's why it's called a Honda Civic Type R. <laughs> I like to think that this car is very precise. It's very exact. It does exactly what you tell it to do. Like, pick a curve. Just pick a curve. And it'll do it. Oh, man. So, okay. So, there's different modes in here, right? Yeah. And you said it in, 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 the, in the ridiculous mode. What's the, the biggest difference for you? Well, here's the biggest difference. You'll feel it. Oh. Okay. So she just adjusted this, the, the, the car from Type R to Comfort, and I could feel, as she did it, the suspension almost felt like it changed, or something changed. Yeah. Yeah, it felt like it, it, like, it, it sunk in a little bit. Like, it, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it... it and oh, this is how I normally drive, just to... Just in Comfort? Yeah. Well, I mean, because there's no reason for me to just, like, you know... Let me see. I just want to see sport mode. I'm just okay. curious. Sport mode is a lot of fun. But it's, it's a lot less serious than R mode. But I think sport mode is like... The gas know. pedal isn't as peppy as yeah. in the R mode. The best way I would describe it is just fun. Like you just want to have a casual spear to drive. You're not driving against anybody. You're just having fun on your own. Okay, so the gauge even changes in type R mode. Right? It goes red. Mm -hmm. And then it gets less red. Yep, it goes from gray to red, yep. I really love the gauge cluster on this car. It gets all the information you need to know immediately. Oh, for sure. So, and it, it, it's funny because like this side right here is super driver focused, but then here your passenger can, nothing. yeah, can do whatever they want. They can touch your radio, message your AC, do everything, right? It's like from, from this side over, it's like, hey, family sedan. <laughs> this side over is like, no, cockpit driver, that's it. I would definitely say that this is a driver's car. Oh, for sure, for sure. It's very precise, it's very precise. When I gave it, uh, I would say like 70% throttle, I could feel the front kind of like the like the prelude where it just kind of when it goes to one side just a little so bit. So that's actually because I have wider wheels on it. Um, it used to have zero torque steer and Honda did that through engineering um, and a lot of it depended on the wheels. They were giant 20s uh, that were almost flat face. Yeah. So you got to control most of the wheel from the outside so that means you control the whole wheel. So it, you know these wheels are more offset so it's controlling more from the middle and it has room to like slip this way or that way. Yeah. But if you're controlling the wheel like fully from the outside, there's less torque steer. Also, there was less body roll because the tires that came on this car were sidewall 30s. Interesting. So they had super low profile, so no body, like no tire flex or anything like that. And the axles were controlling the outside of the wheels, so you didn't have any torque steer. Also, we've got a helical and mid slip, so it just locks. You know, I like this type R. Well, thank you. I like your, I like your build a lot.